الحمد لله الذي يسر لعباده سبل الخيرات وسحر لهم طريق الجنات واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان سيدنا ونبينا محمد عبد الله ورسوله فاللهم صل وسلم وبارك على سيدنا ونبينا محمد وعلى اله وصحبه اجمعين وعلى من تبعهم باحسان الى يوم الدين السلام عليكم ورحمه الله وبركاته In today's session, I will be covering um, Ayah 259 to 261 of Surah Al-Baqarah, inshaAllah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, قَالَ كَمْ لَبِسْتَ قَالَ لَبِسْتُ يَوْمًا أَوْ بَعْدَ يَوْمًا قَالَ بَلْ لَبِسْتَ مِيَاتًا عَامٍ فَانظُرْ إِلَى طُعَامِكَ وَشَرَابِكَ لم يتسنى وانظر إلى حمارك ولنجعلكم آية للناس وانظر إلى الإيزام كيف ننشزوها ثم نكسوها لحما فلما تبين له قال عالم أن الله على كل شيء قدير The meaning of this verse is that or like the one who passed by a town that was overturned on its roofs He said, how shall Allah give this town life after its death? So Allah caused him to die for a hundred years and raised him up again. He said, how long have you remained like this? He said, I have remained like this for a day or a part of a day. He said, no, you have remained like this for a hundred years. So look at your food and your drink. They have not spoiled and look at your donkey. And thus we have made you... A sign for the people and look at the bones how we bring them together and how we clothe them with flesh so when it became clear to him he said I know that surely Allah has power over all things in the previous ayah Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has told us uh, of the debate between Ibrahim salam and Ruth to show us how he had all the power and all the authority uh, to rule in this ayah Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala continues to give us example of his power and uh, he continues to show us why it is only him who can rule in the land. Allah gives us another story that clearly shows how all power is with him and that is why he is the only one who must be submitted in all affairs of life. Allah brings our attention to another example to demonstrate the same point. Here Allah tells us about a man who once passed by a town that had been uh, completely abandoned and ruined. It is not important for us to know who this man was or where this town was. Once again, what we need to look for is the lesson in this story. We need to see how the story demonstrates that all power and might rest with Allah alone. We should always look for how each ayah of the Quran can bring us closer to Allah and we should prevent ourselves from worrying about unnecessary details. So the identity of the man and the location of the town are not important for us, rather what is important is the lesson in this story. Allah describes the town that this man passed by as being overturned on its roof. This is to show um, how completely ruined and devastated the town was. Not only were there no people in the town, but even the roofs of the houses and buildings had fallen down and became um, overturned. It was a completely abandoned and ruined town. Upon seeing this town um, in such a condition, the man said, How shall Allah give this town life after its death? The town was so devastated and ruined that the man wondered to himself how Allah could ever revive this town after it is in such a condition. Imagine that you also see such a town before you. There is not a single human soul in sight whatsoever. The houses are ruined and the roofs have fallen down. Even you might ask yourself how life could ever turn, uh, return to such a devastated place. So upon seeing such a ruined town, the man asked himself how Allah could ever return life to uh, such a place. So Allah uh, chose to demonstrate to this man how he had power to give life to anything. Allah says, so Allah caused him to die for a hundred years and raised him up again. Right there on the spot when he asked this question, Allah caused him to fall down dead. 
Allah let his body remain dead for a hundred years and then after a hundred years had passed Allah raised him to life once again. See now the power of Allah, how easily he can cause death and how easily he can give life. We as human beings in all of uh, of our years of existence on this planet despite all of our scientific and technological advancement still have not mastered death when the time for a human soul comes there is nothing that all of mankind can do to prevent the angel of death from taking it death and life are under the complete power and control of the all powerful we as muslims uh, we as human beings have no power over it whatsoever then uh, when Allah had raised this man back to life, Allah asks him a question. Allah says, how long have you uh, remained like this? This part of the ayah has led to some confusion among some of the commentators of the Quran. They had debated on whether it was Allah who had uh, spoken with this man directly or if it was a human and um, an angel speaking for Allah. They further debated on whether this means that this man is a prophet or not. But before we ask ourselves questions like these, we once again need to remind ourselves that this ayah is giving us a lesson about the power and the authority of Allah. And for us to realize that lesson, we do not need to know about details um, such as these. Allah chose not to tell us these details, so we should not inquire into it too much and we should not make uh, guesses and assumptions only to satisfy our curiosity. We always have to remember that we are learning the Quran in order to be guided to Allah and not to be entertained or to be informed about history. So when we learn the Quran, we should only look for the guidance and nothing else. So the general meaning that we can take from this part of the ayah is that Allah spoke with the man after he had awakened. Now, when the man woke up, it must have felt to him like he had just been sleeping. So Allah asks him, how long he thinks he's been sleeping? The man replies to, um, by saying, I have remained like this for a day or a part of a day. So the man thought that he was sleeping for only a day or for um, only a part of a day. He had been dead for over a hundred years, but he could not perceive it at all. Rather, he thought that uh, he was only sleeping for a day or a part of a day. This shows um, how we can often arrive at the wrong conclusion if we do not study the reality of our surroundings deeply. This man based his responses only by looking quickly at his surroundings and based on how he felt. He woke up and he saw the sun had moved in the sky. So he made the assumption that he had been sleeping for a day or for a part of the day. Um, he did not take the time to study his reality closely. Because of that, he arrived at the wrong conclusion, thinking that he had been sleeping for a few hours when in reality he had been dead for a hundred years. So one lesson that we can uh, take from this is that we must study our surroundings deeply and gather all of the information before we reach a conclusion. We should not jump to a conclusion before we study the reality closely and uh, have all of the information. In the next part of the ayah, Allah tells the man about the truth of his situation and to prove it, Allah turns his attention to uh, the reality that he had previously failed to study. First, Allah tells him that he indeed had been dead for 100 years. Um, imagine how much a shock this must have been for the man who, as far as he was concerned, was only a few hours ago alive and questioning how Allah could give life to a dead town. Now, in order to prove this unbelievable fact, Allah first tells a man to look at his food and drink. Allah shows him how his food has not spoiled at all. Now, it seems, uh, and Allah knows best, that the kind of food that this man was carrying with him was the kind of food that spoils very easily and very quickly. So, if 
the man really had been sleeping for the entire day as he had claimed to be then all of his food and drink would have spoiled but allah shows him how the food and drink had not spoiled to prove to him that he indeed had not been sleeping for the entire day like he had thought then allah tells the man to look at the donkey that he had been riding the donkey had died decomposed and was only scattered bones unlike the man and his food and drink the donkey had not been preserved through the passage of time when the man saw the skeleton of his donkey next to him he realized the truth of what allah told him he realized um, then that he indeed had been dead for over a hundred years he finally comprehended the reality of his situation then allah tells the man why he had caused him to die and why he had brought him back to life after a hundred years allah says and thus we have made you a sign for the people it was a sign for all people to demonstrate the power and ability of allah Allah has power over all things and Allah is able to do all things. Who else but Allah can cause a man to die and then bring back him to life after 100 years. When this man returned to his people and tells them his story, they would all see clearly the power and ability of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Just think how wondrous it must have been for his people to see this man returning home after being away for 100 years, returning home without showing any sign of age, uh, they would clearly see that it is only Allah who has power to do this. They would clearly see how it is only Allah who controls life and death. Thus the man and his miraculous resurrection is a clear sign for all people that it is Allah who all power, uh, who has all power over life and death. See how this man was questioning how Allah could give life to a dead town. And then Allah made uh, the man himself a sign for how he controls life and death then allah says and look at the bones how we bring them together and how we clothe them with the flesh now allah turns the attention of the man to the bones of the uh, his dead donkey allah then brings the donkey back to the life right before the man's very eyes allah has brought the bones back together arranging them in place and then he clothed the bones with flesh, the way in which Allah brought the donkey back to life for the demonstrates how only uh, he has complete power and life and death. But who, uh, but who but Allah can give life to death and decomposing bones? Thus Allah shows the man how just as he can bring him back to life after being dead for a hundred years, Allah can even bring an animal back to life when it is uh, nothing but scattered bones. In the final part of this ayah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, So when it became clear uh, to him, he said, I know that surely Allah has power over all things. Now we can see once again the reason why Allah had caused this man to die and has brought him back to life. Uh, we see the reason why Allah tells us of these events in the Quran. It is to demonstrate uh, the power of Allah over all things. It is to show how it is only Allah who has complete power over life and death. The man was questioning how Allah could give life to a town after it has been completely ruined. And instead of showing the town being revived, Allah actually caused the man himself to die only to bring back to him after 100 years. Allah then made this man as a sign for all people to show that it is he who has complete power over all things and that uh, it is he who has complete control over life and death. In the next verse, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَإِذْ قَالَ إِبْرَاهِيمُ رَبِّي أَرِنِي كَيْفَ تُحْيِي الْمَوْتَى قَالَ أَوَلَمْ تُؤْمِنْ قَالَ بَلَا وَلَكِنْ لَيَتْمَعِنَّ قَلْبِي قَالَ فَخُدْ أَرْبَعَةٌ مِنَ الطَّيْرِ فَسَرْهُنَّ إِلَيْكَ ثُمَّ جَعَلْ عَلَىٰ كُلِّ جَبَلٍ مِنْهُنَّ جُزْءًا ثُمَّ دَعُهُنَّ يَأْتِينَكَ أَسَعِيَا وَعَلَمْ أَنَّ اللَّهَ عَزِيزٌ حَكِيمٌ The meaning of this verse is that And when Ibrahim said, My Rabb, show me how you give life to the death, he said, Do you not believe? 
He said, yes, I believe, but it is just that my heart may be at peace. He said, then take four birds and tame them to your call, then put a part of them on every mountain and call them. They will come to you in haste. And know that surely Allah is mighty wise. Before we discuss this ayah, let us take a moment to remember the theme of the ayah in this part of the surah. These ayahs had been uh, revealed when the Islamic State had just been established and the first Muslim community had just been formed. Now there was uh, finally a um, city-state that ruled completely by the law of Allah and there was a large group of people who were ready to take up the cause of Allah. As Allah called on these people to strive and sacrifice for this message, Allah reminded them of the essential of this message in Ayat al-Kursi. In that uh, beautiful ayah, Allah uh, told the Muslims about himself and he showed them how he deserves all of the worship and servitude because of who he is. Who he is. Allah uh, in, uh, is the perfect one the creator of every single thing, the maintainer and sustainer of every single thing, the one who has complete authority and control on the last day um, and um, the day on which all of mankind will return to Allah. This is Allah. So who else deserves uh, any worship, servitude or obedience besides Him? In the previous ayah, we also saw how Allah also reminded the Muslims that it is he who has complete control over life and death. This also shows us how it is only Allah who deserves all of the worship and all of the obedience. Now in this ayah, Allah continues to demonstrate for us his power and um, his complete control over life and death. This then is the theme of this um, ayah. Allah begins this ayah by um, saying, And when Ibrahim said, My Rabb, Show me how you give life to the dead. Here Allah brings um, our attention to a request that Ibrahim alayhi salam once made to him. Ibrahim alayhi salam once asked Allah to demonstrate for him as how he gave life, how Allah gave uh, life to the dead. The reason why Ibrahim alayhi salam had made uh, this request was because of a curiosity that he had as to how it is that Allah can restore life after death. It was not because he in any way doubted the power of Allah over life and death. Um, this fact is proved in the next part of the ayah. First Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala asks um, Ibrahim alayhi salam, Do you not believe? This means, do you not believe in my complete power over life and death? To which Ibrahim alayhi salam responds by saying that, Yes, I believe, but it is just that my heart may be at peace. Here Ibrahim alayhi salam shows us that he alayhi salam indeed did believe in the complete power of Allah over life and death but he also only made this request so that his heart may be at peace so that this uh, curiosity could be satisfied. The uh, ability to give life is one of the greatest manifestations if not the great um, if not the greatest manifestation of the power of Allah. Ibrahim a.s. believed with utmost certainty in this power of Allah, but he only wanted to see how Allah did it, so that his curiosity could be satisfied and his heart could be at peace. We ourselves may believe um, in something uh, with utmost certainty, but it is something uh, so amazing that we might have a curiosity to see how it is happening, such was the case uh, with Ibrahim alayhi salam. So it is important for us to remember from this part of the ayah that Ibrahim alayhi salam asked Allah for a demonstration of how he gave life only out of curiosity and not of doubt. It is very important for us to believe that all of the prophets believe in Allah and all of the pro perfect names of Allah with utmost certainty. Then Allah tells Ibrahim alayhi salam that he must do in order to see how Allah gives life to dead. Allah says, then take four birds and tame them to your call. First Ibrahim alayhi salam had to take four birds. The scholars say that they were each different kinds of birds. Then Ibrahim alayhi salam had to tame them to his call. This means that he alayhi salam had to train them to come to him uh, whenever he called them. So we can imagine that Ibrahim took some time to find uh, these four birds 
then he uh, then take time to train them to come to his call this must have been difficult but it was necessary for the amazing demonstration that allah was going to show him despite uh, this uh, difficulty ibrahim alayhi salam did what allah had commanded ibrahim alayhi salam was always uh, one who fulfilled every single order that allah had given him then allah says um uh, uh, then put a part of them on every mountain. The scholars say that what Ibrahim salam had to do next was that he had to kill each of the four birds. Then he had to cut their bodies into several pieces. Then he had to mix the remains of all four birds with each other. So the flesh, feathers and bones of one of the dead birds was mixed with another of the dead birds. Then he had to put this mixed portion of each bird on a different mountain. So each mountain had the remains of different birds and the remains were all mixed together. All of this meaning that we have described here is given in this portion of the ayah. Notice once again how Allah put so much meaning in only a few words. Then Allah says, call them, they will uh, come to you in haste. So imagine this now. Uh, not only is each of the birds dead, but each of them had been cut up into several pieces. And not only have uh, they been cut up into several pieces, but the remains of each of them has been mixed with the remains of another of them. And they have all been placed on different mountains. Uh, now Allah tells Ibrahim salam to merely stand in one place and to call out to the birds. Once Ibrahim salam did that, he saw each of the birds coming towards him. Not only had each of the birds been brought back to life, but each of the birds was whole and, uh, uh, and as it should be. None of the birds had any of their body parts mixed with another bird. When Ibrahim salam called out to them, he saw them all coming towards uh, him. Not only did they come, but they came in haste. So it must have been a very short time from the moment that Ibrahim salam called out to the birds till the time that he saw them flying towards him. Thus, uh, not only uh, had Allah resurrected the birds after their bodies had been cut up and mixed together, but he had done it in, uh, inst- uh, in it instantly. Such is the power of Allah over life and death. Um, then Allah says, and know that surely Allah is mighty wise. This is a command from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to Ibrahim alayhi salam. Allah commands Ibrahim alayhi salam to know with certainty that he is indeed mighty and wise. Allah reminds Ibrahim alayhi salam of the reason for him giving him alayhi salam this demonstration. It is only so that Ibrahim alayhi salam would know that surely Allah is mighty and wise. The power of Allah and the perfection of his names are the reason why we worship and serve him. So our gaze in the life of this world must be directed towards looking at manifestations of the power of Allah. Just like Ibrahim salam, we ourselves can see several examples of how Allah gives life in the world around us. No matter where you are in the world, you see the power of Allah in the world around you and you can draw closer to him through your observations. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is mighty because he has the power to give life to all of the creatures of the world. And Allah is wise because he gives life to those whom he is uh, in his eternal wisdom deemed to have life. So look at the world around you and look at yourself and see the might and wisdom of Allah all around you. In the next verse, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, مَثْلُ الَّذِينَ يُنْفِقُونَ أَمْوَالَهُمْ فِي سَبِيلِ اللَّهِ كَمَثَلِ حَبَّةٍ أَنْبَدَتْ سَبْعَ سَنَا بِلَا فِي كُلِّ سُنْبُلَةٍ مِّعَاتُ حَبَّةٍ وَاللَّهُ يُدَعِفُ لِمَنْ يَشَاءَ وَاللَّهُ وَاسِعٌ عَلِيمٌ The meaning of this verse is that the example of the ones who spend their wealth in the way of Allah is the example of a grain that grows seven years. In each year is a uh, hundred grains and Allah multiplies for whom he pleases and Allah is all embracing, all knowing. The two most prized positions of, for a human being are his life and his wealth. 
in this in the previous ayah allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reminded us that uh, it was he alone who had complete control over life and death thus allah exhorted us to give our lives for his cause in this ayah allah brings our attention to that other most prized possession of ours and that is our wealth allah shows us how we must spend our wealth despite our love for it to encourage um, us to do this allah shows us the immense and uncountable reward that he has kept reserved for those who sincerely spent uh, their wealth for him allah shows us how he has uh, kept reserved with him for us uh, is uh, exponent ex- um, uh, um, like better um, better than anything in this world that has to offer the sea returns our attention away from the fleeting uh, shuttles of the life of this world and towards him Allah makes us realize how our existence in the life of this world is nothing uh, but realizing our passion and desire for this life and um, the material things of this life and is journeying towards him to show us exactly how much reward that he has kept for those who sincerely spent for him Allah gives us a beautiful parable Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says the example of the ones who spent their wealth in the way of Allah is the example of a grain that grows 7 years in each year is um, 100 grains and Allah multiplies for whom he pleases Sayyid Qutb rahimahullah tells us in the tafsir of this ayah of the beautiful imaginary that this parable conveys when you read this uh, ayah in the original arabic and with a deep comprehension of its meaning you can almost see a field of grains right there in front of you you can almost see the grains opening up and multiplying right before your very eyes this is how allah this is how uh, the early muslims felt when they read this ayah they could picture this image that allah gives so vividly uh, in their minds when they did Uh, then they knew that Allah was multiplying the reward of anything that they spend sincerely for his sake not uh, only multiplying it once or twice but multiplying it 700 times can you even imagine the kind of reward that must be so for example look at uh, anything that you have which you give sincerely for Allah the moment you take this position and give it away the moment it leaves your hand at that very moment a reward is generated for you then this reward is multiplied and how many times it is multiplied we see from this ayah that allah multiplies the reward 700 times 700 times the reward of your spending is multiplied 700 times can you even begin to imagine how much your reward is growing when it is multiplied this many times such is the reward from the merciful and the gracious and the bountiful what exactly is this reward that allah has given you first and foremost uh, it is the pleasure of allah when you spend sincerely for the sake of allah then you should uh, know that the one who created you and the one who is keeping you alive at this very moment is pleased with you if you truly realize allah then you will see that this is Uh, in fact is the best of rewards then the next reward is the eternal pleasure and bliss of the garden this is uh, then it is the forgiveness of sins and being saved from the punishment then it is uh, peace and contentment in the life of this world then it is a sustenance and provisions in the life of this world all of these are uh, part of the reward of allah when you spend sincerely for allah you can be sure that he will give you all of this and he will multiply it for you so what is it that you must spend in order to get this reward maududi um, tells us that this i is general and so anything that you spend sincerely seeking the pleasure of allah will earn this reward first and foremost um, you should uh, know that uh, it is your family who has the greatest right to your wealth so first you must make sure all of their needs are met the best charity that you can give in is the charity uh, to ensure that the needs of your family are met then there is spending on the orphans and the poor and those of your muslim brothers and sisters who are going through times of difficulty 
then it is also includes spending for the dawah spending to spread the message of allah to mankind and spending to establish the law of allah in the land the amount to spend is not specified but the more you spend the more reward that you will get the only key to bear in mind is that your spending must be sincerely for the sake of allah you cannot seek any other objective in your spending other than the pleasure of allah if you ever try to seek anything from the creation because of your spending such uh, asking them for a favor in return or thinking that they owe you in any way and then you should not expect any reward from allah allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ends this ayah by um, reminding us of two of his most beautiful names allah says allah is embracing and all-knowing the names alwasi simply cannot be adequately translated to english it means the all-embracing but it means far most than that uh, far more than that it means the one who is boundless and without limits the generosity and bounty of allah is boundless and has no limits allah will give and give without counting or keeping track there is no limit to what allah can give so know that you are being rewarded for what you give by one who has no limits in how much you can he can reward whatever your expectations are for your reward from allah you should know that allah has already exceeded your expectations you should also know that allah is all knowing Allah knows uh, about every single thing that you spent for him and Allah knows the intention that was in your heart when you spent uh, on it. With this we end our lesson for today. Subhanakallahu bihamdika. Ashadun la ilaha illa anta astaghfiruka wa tawbila. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.